Welcome to Kite Surf College. In this video, we're going to look at several kite surfing accidents, more commonly known as kite mares. This is not for shock value and cheap entertainment, which is often the case with compilations. Rather, we're going to see what we can learn from each one and hopefully make it so that these accidents don't happen in the future. Let's get started. Here, the chicken loop was ejected. You would expect the kite to flag out. But instead, it starts looping and keeps looping. In fact, the only reason it stops is because the kite flies down into the wind shadow behind this pier. So what caused the kite to behave like this? Way before the accident, you can see the center lines and safety line are knotted around the bar. This means the bar is not free to travel along the safety line, which is required to flag out the kite. Instead, the bar is locked in place. Plus, the knot on the bar tilts the bar to the left, which keeps the kite steering to the left. One huge lesson here is the importance of line inspection. You should be able to see that your lines are not tangled. Center lines pass through the bar to the leading edge unobstructed. Steering line should pass from the bar ends to the wingtips unobstructed. You should do this visual check often and always before launching. Even before relaunching or self-launching, you need to look and check that those lines are in order. Another fundamental lesson here is to always be prepared with your next safety step. So, if you've ejected your chicken loop, get ready to use the leash eject. Hold on to it and wait to see what happens with your kite. If the kite starts dragging you, it's probably too late to start searching for your leash eject. Let's look at another kite mare. It was a shocking scene in South Florida, caught on camera. Down wall, what's your emergency? We have a kite that's been injured and pulled in by the wing. What happened there? We have a kite stripper guy who got lofted and pulled in and hit uh, several objects coming in his rear back. This is a nasty one. I don't think any other incident has done more damage to the reputation of kite surfing. I've spoken to the kiter in this video and I'm happy to say he survived. He informed me that a pulley malfunctioned on his kite and presumably that sent the kite steering to one side. For me, however, the big lesson here is actually about knowing your limits. When you finish your lessons, you're ready to kite, but you're not ready to kite in all conditions. You have to build up your years and years of experience and then gradually you'll be ready for stronger wind. In this video, we have tropical storm conditions. In that kind of wind, if something goes wrong, it goes wrong quickly. You can see there's a window of only a few seconds where the kiter could have used his safeties. In your first years of kiting, you haven't seen it all and the kite can surprise you from time to time and you will be slower to react. Let's move on to the next video. So the kiter here got launched even with the bar out. There's a clue to what caused this at the start of the video. We get a glimpse upwind of the kiter and can see buildings and trees there. That means the wind is passing around these obstacles before reaching the kite. That makes the wind changeable and gusty. Wind like this is very dangerous unless you know how to handle it. That's a big reason kiters look for an onshore wind since this wind passes over the ocean without obstructions. Let's move on to the next video. The 
This is a nice clear video as you can really see what's going on. The right steering line is tucked behind the bar, which adds extra tension and steers the kite to the right. The kiter does a good job of counter steering with the left to slow the kite and then ejects the chicken loop just in time. Once again, this highlights the importance of line inspection. Your lines should be completely unobstructed. This video also shows how risky launching a kite can be. The moment when you launch is when you find out if your kite's flying well or not. And it's very common that there can be an issue. The kite can surprise you as it launches. For that reason, I strongly recommend you learn to fly with one hand so that your other hand can be ready on the chicken loop eject during a launch or a relaunch or a self-launch. Another way to reduce the risks when you have flat water conditions like this is to ask your launcher to walk your kite upwind into the water and then you can do your launch there far away from hazards. The kiter here was going for a straight jump without rotation. However, he starts to rotate, panic sets in, and he starts steering the bar. He steers so much, in fact, that the kite loops. He then accelerates and lands so hard he's knocked out. If there weren't other people close by, this could have been fatal. So what can be done to avoid this? If you're disorientated in the air, you have two choices. If you know for sure that the kite is near 12, you can hold the bar in and keep it completely straight. This will keep the kite above your head, give you some lift and help you glide back down. If you have no idea where the kite is, then it's usually better to let go of the bar. If you do this before gaining height, the landing should be fine. What you never want to do while disorientated is steer the bar. My second tip on avoiding this is to get lots of practice in light wind. In light wind, mistakes are far less costly. You can work on thousands of jumps and rotations in light wind and iron out all of your mistakes and problems. Let's move on to the next kite mare. This is a really nasty accident but there are plenty of ways to avoid it. Simply connecting the leash to the front or side of the harness would have given him a good chance of ejecting that leash before getting dragged into the car park. With the leash attached to the back of the harness, it's almost impossible to eject it once the kite powers up. Also, it looks like his leash is connected in suicide mode. People use suicide mode to keep the kite flying if they drop the bar while working on unhooked tricks. But there's no good reason to be on the beach, near hazards, in strong wind, in suicide mode. Also, semi-suicide mode might have been a bit safer, as this still allows the kite to flag out if the chicken loop opens up. Of course, the vast majority of kiters should be leashing onto the safety line as normal. Let's look at what caused this accident. The kiter self-launches. 
The kite aims upwards from the self-launch and therefore climbs quickly. The kiter sees the kite climbing, so steers right to keep the kite down. However, the bar is the wrong way round, so he's actually steering the wrong way. The kite then hits the ground and stops moving for a moment. However, the kiter is still moving downwind. This allows him to travel over the top of his own lines, which leads to the bar getting jammed under his harness hook. This is a really bad situation. With the right side of the bar stuck under the harness, the kite keeps steering to the right. And with the bar jammed in place, the chicken loop eject and the leash eject are ineffective. By this stage, the only solution is to stop the kite from turning. To stop the kite turning, you need to counter steer. To stop the kite turning to the right, you can pull hard on the left line. The kite will then sit on the sand, allowing you to unhook the bar or wait for someone to grab the kite. However, this is not the lesson I want you to take from this. It's far more important that you learn how to avoid getting in this situation in the first place. As they say, prevention is better than cure. The first way to avoid this accident would be to do an assisted launch. With someone holding your kite, you have plenty of time to check your lines. The accident could have also been avoided simply by letting go of the bar for a moment. You don't need to cling to the bar when you launch a kite. Let go of the bar, assess the kite and then fly it. Also, it's very important to launch using one hand so you can keep your spare hand ready by the chicken loop eject. These simple habits will get drilled into you early on in lessons so that you don't have to come face to face with a deaf loop like this. That's all of my kite mares for now. If you've seen any kite mares that you'd like explained, please put the links into the comments below as I will make another kite mares video. Thank you very much for watching and safe kiting to all of you.